In A Clash of Kings, the second book of A Song of Ice and Fire, Daenerys ends her story by having a series of visions in the House of the Undying. This house is ruled over by the warlocks of Karth, who use a drug called Shade of the Evening in order to have visions of the past, present, and future. Daenerys imbibes on this uh, strange liquid and ends up having similar visions of the past, of the present, and of the future. She sees her brother Rhaegar at several points, most notably with his wife Elia and then his death. She sees visions of the present with depictions of the War of the Five Kings, and she sees visions of the future. Uh, the biggest one is the vision of the Red Wedding, which is still a book away from happening at the point of uh, this portion of the story in A Clash of Kings. However, there is an interesting portion of the prophecy given by the Undying themselves that could lay out a good deal of Daenerys' future trajectory, and that is what we are going to examine today. Once Daenerys eventually arrives at the Undying themselves, these seemingly immortal warlocks begin to spout prophecy to her in groups of three. They state that she will light a fire for life, a fire for death, and a fire to love. They say that she will ride a mount to bed, a mount to dread, and a mount to love. And lastly, they say that she will know a treason for blood, a treason for gold, and a treason for love. So, the examination today is going to be going into those final three. Daenerys is a very powerful figure with many people around her, and we are, may have already seen certain candidates for betrayal in her story in the future. So today we're going to examine the potential betrayal for blood, betrayal for gold, and betrayal for love. The treason for blood is something that Daenerys has already speculated upon in her inner monologue. She thinks that it's Miri Mazdur, someone who betrayed her because of her blood being killed by Drogo and his horde. And her betrayal was Miri killing Drogo and Rhaegar, Daenerys' unborn son. However, this might not be the case. Prophecies are often misinterpreted by the characters to which they pertain, so it would be worthwhile to examine these betrayals as they might happen in a future context. And as far as I understand it, I believe there are two primary candidates for a betrayal for blood. The first of these is Barristan Selmy, should he survive the Battle of Fire. It does seem a little unlikely to me that he will survive this battle. However, overall, should he survive and find out about the Aegon claim, he may end up betraying Daenerys as Aegon would, if legitimate, have a stronger claim on the throne than Daenerys. This would be a betrayal for the bloodline, for uh, exactly why uh, Barristan would very much support Aegon as he is this kind of fine knight, upstanding citizen, who would want to uh, very much support the rightful claimant as much as he can, even if it would mean leaving that who he's currently with. The second candidate, in my eyes, has slightly better odds of surviving the Battle of Fire, but slightly worse odds of being the Betrayal for Blood himself, that being Victarion Greyjoy. We know Victarion is both on his way to Daenerys, extremely dumb, and extremely self-interested, and all three of these things seem to be perfect ticks and boxes for reasons why he might betray Daenerys. However, if he is the Betrayal for Blood, I do not think it would be in the sense that it is typically thought about, as Martin tends to do with prophecies. I think that Victarion could betray Daenerys for the sake of violence, a betrayal for blood, as it were. He could end up uh, perhaps slaughtering civilians if she asks him not to, or something like that, or raiding areas that he might not have been permitted to raid. Or additionally, the betrayal of blood might be in favor of Daenerys. We know for a fact that he plans on betraying Euron and attempting to marry Daenerys himself. The betrayal for blood could be a betrayal of blood. It could be Victarion betraying Euron for the sake of Daenerys, as it could be beneficial for Daenerys, while the other two could be detrimental. The Treason for Gold is another prophecy on which Daenerys speculates rather frequently. She initially thinks that it's Jorah who betrayed her for a pardon from Varys. However, Jorah later specifies that this was not for the sake of gold, he just wanted to go home, which makes sense as an exile. He can very much make money in Essos, particularly as a sellsword, However, he can't be home in Essos. His home is in Westeros. Additionally, she thinks that it might be Ben Plum, who is the one betraying her. However, we learn from his interactions with Tyrion in the Winds of Winter sample chapters that his actions were not for the sake of gold. So it seems quite likely that the candidacy for this betrayal for gold is very much still open to happen in the future. Tyrion Lannister seems to be the most likely character to betray Daenerys for gold. It's worth noting the author's intention when considering this prophecy. George R. R. Martin tends to like his prophecies very intentionally obscure and obtuse. It's very rare that they should be interpreted literally. 
and it is often the case that the characters who receive them do interpret them literally, as Daenerys has done. If Tyrion were to do to betray Daenerys, it would not likely be for coin. It would likely be for gold, for his family. More than any other house in Westeros, the Lannisters are associated with gold. Their entire castle is in a gold mine. It's their main export from the Westerlands. Their hair is golden, and they are just overall known as rich people. It does seem quite likely that Tyrion would harbor some still uh, kind of sentiment for his family, though it might be buried very deep down after his journey in a dance with dragons, especially if Daenerys were to threaten them. It does make sense that overall Tyrion is more likely to betray Daenerys for his family than for anything else, or at the very least in terms of self-interest. He is a Lannister and likely the last Lannister to be able to continue the legacy, continue to have kids as it seems as though all of Jaime and Cersei's children are doomed. So the betrayal for gold could be Tyrion kind of fully embracing Tywin and betraying her for the gold, for the sake of House Lannister. The easiest betrayal to predict is the betrayal for love, and this seems to be Jon Snow betraying Daenerys Targaryen by killing her after some form of invasion to Westeros. This is already heavily foreshadowed in the books and was pretty much given away by the Game of Thrones show. It is oftentimes a mistake to base a book theory on show evidence. However, there is enough evidence and textual uh, foreshadowing in A Song of Ice and Fire to support this and to enforce the belief that this is a core element of the ending of the series that Martin initially envisioned. That Jon Snow would have to kill his love Daenerys Targaryen and kind of bring full circle the prophecy of Nyssa Nyssa and Azor Ahai, as this has been established as a fairly important element. Though, I could very much see it being subverted in a typical George R. R. Martin fashion. The best evidence for this being the betrayal for love in the books as well was actually unearthed fairly recently in a college library by Reddit user GSteph. This is really interesting stuff. He's discovered a great deal about A Feast for Crows and A Dance with Dragons, particularly in its very early draft stages, back when they were still a single book and back when there were still elements of the time skip that were lingering throughout. In Book 5, Daenerys has a dream where she dreams of Hisdar, her uh, husband-to-be. However, he seems strange. He has blue lips, and he's very cold, and he just feels unnatural, almost like a corpse. Daenerys wakes up in a start from this vision, looks around, and realizes, oh, he's not there. He's just with Dario at the time. Uh, however, this is quite different in the initial draft version of this passage. The draft version of this passage goes on to specify Daenerys' internal thoughts after she wakes up, further elaborating on what exactly the vision was. She states that as she wakes up, uh, she says, Here's a voice, my queen, said a soft voice in the darkness. Danny flinched, imagining pale skin, blue lips, a twisted blade. Who is there? This clearly shows some form of fear lingering from the dream and just perhaps Daenerys' paranoia persisting. However, those specific clues very much point towards Jon Snow. Jon Snow dies, was brought very close to death at the end of A Dance with Dragons, and it seems quite likely that if he is brought back in the books, he could perhaps have elements of him that are more corpse-like. Or at the very least, he could symbolically still be a corpse, a dead man who now walks and is still able to have this romance with Danny because he was reanimated, perhaps by Melisandre. Additionally, it seems as though this hint, this twisted blade that is referred to, kind of just very vaguely alluded to in the actual text that we got in A Dance with Dragons, and outright stated in this draft chapter, very much directly refers to uh, John stabbing Daenerys and betraying her seemingly for love. It seems as though Martin might have taken this part out as it would be too directly giving away the game, exactly what is going to happen in the future of the book. So I, I am very much in favor of him taking this out, but I do highly recommend you read these Reddit posts if you have the time. It goes over a lot of really interesting elements of the drafts of A Feast for Crows that lend a lot of insight into the events of both the past and the future. In The Winds of Winter and A Dream of Spring, it seems quite likely that Daenerys' three betrayals will be Victarion Greyjoy or Barristan Selmy for blood, Tyrion Lannister for gold, and Jon Snow for love. 
These will undoubtedly do great damage to Daenerys' cause and could ultimately lead to her downfall. I'd love to hear what you think of these theories in the comments. Be sure to let me know if you think there are any other candidates, if these prophecies might have already happened. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. While you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe, all the normal YouTube stuff. I really appreciate it, and it really helps me grow the channel. And yeah, I should be back soon with more videos. I will probably be going just one weekly upload from here on in, at least in the near future, as I have just started student teaching, and I uh, don't have as much time as I did uh, in the recent past. But yeah. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope you have a good one. See you soon.